All right, so what I have here is a Vivor dividing head, model number BSKP5. Uh, I think this thing retails for like 240 bucks on their website if you register. They did send it over to me and ask me if I would take a look at it, so let's take a look at it. And here is everything that comes inside of the box. Of course, you get the dividing head unit itself, which comes with three different dividing adapter plates for all of your dividing needs. One of those plates does come pre-installed on the unit. It comes with its own little adjustable footstock for supporting work that's a little bit longer. You get a number two Morse taper dead center, this little aluminum drive dog to work with that dead center, and a spindle nose thread protector cap. Of course, all this stuff is intended to be used when the chuck has been removed, which brings me to the next point. It does come with its own three jaw chuck pre-installed. And that chuck, of course, comes with both inside and outside jaws, as well as, of course, a chuck key. So I think all in all, you're definitely getting a good amount of tooling um, comparatively for the price, you know, compared to what you would pay for some more high end stuff. This is quite a bit of tooling for the price. However, with that said, for the sake of full transparency, I should mention that I have definitely spent at least the last 45 minutes to an hour just disassembling, cleaning, sanding, deburring, filing, getting everything to move freely and smoothly. So, you know, out of the box, fit and finish certainly leaves quite a bit to be desired. But, you know, like I said, it is a lot of tooling for comparatively a very small price. So, I don't know, choose your battles. But that's definitely something to be aware of. Um, when I pulled this out of the box, I did have to spend quite a bit of time just taking things apart and cleaning everything up just to get it to work the way that, you know, I wanted to to be able to demonstrate it in the video. All right, so really quickly, I just want to mention that in this video, I'm not going to be covering in detail how to use a dividing head. There are a ton of resources available online and in books that'll tell you how to use the lookup tables and determine which plates you're going to need for whichever number of divisions you're after and all that good stuff. However, before we go any further, I do just want to quickly demonstrate the two main modes of operation that you'll get with the dividing head of this style. This is a BS0 dividing head and demonstrate how to switch between those two modes of operation. First and foremost, like I just said, with any dividing head of this particular style, you're gonna get two main modes of operation. The first mode that we'll talk about is what's referred to as direct indexing. In this mode, the worm gear of the dividing head is disengaged and the spindle, as you can see here, will spin freely. Whenever you're using the dividing head in the direct indexing mode, you're going to be relying on this main indexing plate that's located right on the spindle. This plate has 24 holes and each hole represents a movement of 15 degrees. It also has this pin that you can move back and forth to lock into the hole once you get to the one that you need. And then there's the main spindle lock that's located right here on the side of the device. And then, of course, if the 24 hole plate doesn't cover your needs, you always have the worm drive. Now, the worm drive in this particular dividing head is 40 to one, and I think that's pretty common for a lot of dividing heads that you're gonna come across, which means that this little handle that I'm cranking, if I turn this 40 times, it's gonna rotate the spindle one full revolution. And this is where you're gonna start using your lookup tables and the different dividing plates here. But again, like I said, we're not gonna cover all that in this video. Instead, we're just going to touch on those two main modes of operation and show you how to switch between them. So 
Right now, obviously, I'm currently using the worm drive. And if I want to disengage the worm drive and go back to direct indexing, all that I need to do is grab this indexing plate here and rotate the worm drive back and out of position. Now you can see that when I crank this handle, nothing happens and I can turn the spindle freely however I want. Now, it is important to note that there is a locking screw located behind this dividing plate that needs to be loosened to enable the ability to rotate this worm gear in and out of position. To get to it, you have to remove the handle, remove the dividing plate, and then you'll see there's a little screw back there that you can tighten or loosen. I have already taken this stuff off and loosened that screw, and honestly, this is normally how I leave it. Like I said, I'm basically always using the direct dividing mode, so I just leave it loose so that I can always flip in and out if I need to, but if you ever were doing something where you needed to engage that worm gear, you would definitely want to engage that worm gear and lock that screw down tight. Because the last thing you want is to be in the middle of a complex dividing operation and then have this thing vibrate out of position and you lose your place. Okay, next, let's talk about this chuck. Because this is something else that I think you should probably be aware of if you've never dealt with one of these import dividing heads before. I have no idea why, but these things are notorious for shipping with these chucks screwed on so darn tight that you'll be convinced that it just doesn't come off at all. However, I assure you that it does. So what we're gonna do is try and get the chuck off of this one. We're gonna see how tight it is. I haven't even tried yet, so maybe this one will pop right off, but I have a feeling <laughs> it's probably gonna be the same as most of these. It's probably gonna be really difficult to get off. So I wanna demonstrate getting this thing off on this video so you know that it's possible if you end up with one of these things in your shop. So here's the plan. I have the dividing head hopefully secured in this vise, which I in turn have secured to my table here. I have the spindle of the dividing head locked in position. I have one of these pins engaged and the spindle lock is on nice and tight. I have this big wrench here. I'm going to put the wrench on one of the jaws of the chuck and we're just going to see what it takes to crack this thing loose. So I guess uh, let's give it a go. Just start by kind of, oh, hey, look at that. That wasn't too bad. All right, well, that's one point to Vivor because that was a lot easier than the last one I did. And there's a little look at the spindle threads on the back plate. Oh, just a, another quick thing to mention is that these spindle threads are in fact inch and a half by eight TPI. So if you've got like a South Bend nine inch or something like that, these back plates will actually work on your lathe. I don't know how useful that is to you, but you know, there you go, that's something. So there we go, Chuck is removed. Definitely a lot easier than the last one I did. So points to Vivor there. The threads themselves are, I don't know, I guess they're fine. I don't know how well it's gonna come up on camera, but you can see where they relieved this back thread here. They just plunged in with a parting tool and they have left an absolutely razor sharp ridge on this back thread. So, I mean, you know, whatever, just <laughs> watch your fingers, I guess. But now that we have the chuck removed, the last thing that I wanna do is we're gonna put this dead center into the spindle. We'll take this thing, we'll put it up on the surface plate and we'll just put a DTI on this dead center and spin the crank handle, see what it looks like. Change of plans, we are actually on the milling machine. I realized it was gonna be difficult to keep this thing from sliding all over the place on the granite. But what we're doing is we're not doing anything crazy. It's gonna be pretty simple, pretty straightforward, nothing fancy. I have the dead center inserted firmly in the spindle. I have an indicator indicated on the side of the dead center. And I'm just gonna go through a full revolution of the spindle and we'll see if or how much this indicator moves. Honestly. I'm not expecting it to do a whole lot. Normally the spindles in these things are pretty decent, but you know, we'll see. Anyway, let's get started and see what this thing looks like.
As expected, not too bad at all, I don't think. I figure while we have this thing set up, I might as well go ahead and engage the spindle lock. So as you can see, when I engage the spindle lock, it does move a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just push back and forth on this dead center. I am pushing on this thing pretty hard. I'm basically just leaning back and putting my weight on it. As you can see, there's definitely some movement, but you know, keep in mind, I have this thing mounted in the vise, which is mounted to my mill table. So there's a lot of different stuff that could be moving in this equation. I don't necessarily think that all of this movement is in the spindle of this dividing head. You know, in my opinion, for hobby use, I don't think this is too bad, but you know, I just, give you the information and you can make that determination for yourself. There is one more feature to this type of dividing head and that is the ability to tilt. As you can see, there's this scale along the side of the unit which indicates that it can be tilted up to 90 degrees. To enable the tilt, if we flip it around to the other side here, you can see that it has these two locking screws. You just loosen these up. They might be pretty tight the first time you try and loosen them out of the box, but you just go ahead and get them loosened up. And once they're loose, as you can see, you can now tilt it to you know whatever angle you need between zero and 90 degrees. Just keep in mind that the indicator for this little tilt scale, it's just a piece of metal with a little tick mark stamped in it. So if you need it to be super accurate, as always, you'll have to dial it in. And I even recommend that when you first get one of these, when you first take it out of the box, get it set to zero so that it's indicating no tilt at all. And then put your own tick mark on this little piece of metal, maybe color it yellow or something, but get it set so that you know that you can trust that zero mark and then just go from there. And there we have it. That is a very, very brief look at this Vivor dividing head. If you want to know my personal opinion, you know, I think it does what it's supposed to do. And I think it does so in a perfectly acceptable manner for hobbyist use. Does it have the best build quality and fit and finish? You know, absolutely not. But whenever I take a look at these inexpensive import tools, I always try and do so, I guess, as fairly as possible. Insofar as I try to consider things like, how much does it cost? What accessories does it come with? And you know, whether or not it's dirty and needs some love and attention when you first pull it out of the box is something that I definitely think is worth mentioning, but in my opinion at least, is far, far less important than whether or not it does the job that it's supposed to do. And I just try and provide some relevant info to let you know how well you might expect it to do that job in case you're looking into something like this for yourself. And of course, if you are looking into something like this for yourself, I'll have some links down below. There should be a link in the description and probably pinned in the top comment. So go ahead and check those out. Anyway, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so very much for watching. I do truly appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one very, very soon.